Hey guys, this is Onisha Biggs of Pharmacy Tech Lessons. And today I have something so exciting in store for you guys. We're going to be talking about pharmacy math again. Okay. Um, and in particularly, we're going to be talking about tonight, pharmacy, pharm pharmacy. And it's just going to be all out a great session tonight. Okay. I want to talk back and forth to you guys. Um, take what questions you have see your understanding on pharmacy math formulas and just learn a bit more about what you guys think about pharmacy math formulas and if you use them or not. All right. So let's see who, who all we have here. Thank you guys for the likes. Um, if you're just hopping in, introduce yourself in the chat right now. Uh, we're going to be here for a little bit talking about pharmacy math formulas tonight. And um, if you could give us a thumbs up as well. Also, to those of you that see in the comments, so that we can show you a little bit of love, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. So um, let's talk about these pharmacy math formulas. Oh, what a big topic. Because, listen, guys, over the course of your time looking on Google, looking on YouTube, looking on Facebook, asking in groups, you're going to see a lot of advice, okay? A lot of people are giving advice. But it doesn't mean that they're qualified to give advice you're going to see what I mean after I share this. You're not going to believe what happened to me. OK, so a few years back when I was taking the exam. I actually had the most terrible experience with math. All right. That was one of my worst subjects. There were a few reasons why for that, but I want to share with you the main reason why. OK, I had searched all over. I'd even seen in books like all of these formulas, all these math formulas to use. And I felt so smart and I felt so, so uh, astute, like I'm going to just do so well on the exam. Right. So I learned the formulas or so I thought I studied the formulas. I did problems using the formulas. All of my studying of pharmacy math revolved around these core formulas. All right. So in my rationale and how I was thinking, oh, I got pharmacy math in a bag, right? It's going to work. Here's what happened, though. Here's the reality of what happened. I got to the computer the day that I'm taking the exam. I look at the computer and I freeze. <laughs> I literally freeze, okay? I'm going through problems and then I get to a few more problems and I freeze, Right. So, you know, there's that if you've taken the PCCB exam before, then you know that there is a skip feature. So I start skipping problems that I didn't know. And I freeze again. There was another problem. Guys, what was happening to me was I was freezing on pharmacy math problems. OK. And I was in particularly freezing because I would get to the problem, try to think about the formula, try to recall the formula, may know like the first two parts of that formula. But then it's like I blank out like, oh, what is that formula? What is that formula? And then and then here's what happens. I'm starting to get frustrated. And as I'm going through more problems, problem 20, problem 25, problem 45, problem 50. I freeze again. Oh, what was that formula? What was that formula? Oh, I forgot. Oh, man. And now I'm beyond frustrated. I'm discouraged. All right. And now at problem 70, 75. I'm beyond discouragement. I just gave up all hope. I'm like, I know I bombed this test. Like, I couldn't remember anything. It's like I got so nervous, guys, at the exam that I just, they go through the same experience with these pharmacy math formulas. They get to the exam. They think they're ready, super confident, and then their brain just goes, their brain just goes blank, right? I love this, Valerie. Keep that going. But most people show up to the exam and they do that. All right. So I want to show you today how to avoid that. And I want to show you today and really express to you why it's just so important that you don't emphasize pharmacy math problems. Contrary to popular belief. All right. This is what I call this. I call this. This is the PTL pharmacy math formula rationale. OK. If you've gone through schooling with pharmacy tech lessons, then you know we do not teach you math formulas. And I really wish that I had let a lot of the students know that I was just going to go live with you guys tonight because a lot of them will hop on and like really tell you how this, this not going according to the formula way has helped them so, 
so much, like tremendously, it makes a big difference. All right. So we're getting some questions already. Keep the questions flowing in because I do want to answer your questions tonight around this topic. All right. But here's the first reason, though, that I want to share with you why those pharmacy math formulas don't. I'm not saying it's never worked for anybody. I would never do that because that would be a super biased statement. But for most people, all right, the 80, I would say 80 to 90 percent is not working for them. All right. The first reason is. It's depending totally on your memorization. Like you're getting math like word problem hinges on you knowing this formula. If you don't know the formula, then you don't know where to plug what in. Ooh, that's kind of tough, right? So that's the first thing. The second reason is this. Learning a pharmacy math formula, when you're looking at a word problem, it's not teaching you word problem comprehension. Right. It's not teaching you um, what to pull out and, and what not to pull out of that word problem that you're reading. It doesn't teach you word problem comprehension. A book, it can't teach you word problem comprehension. That's just the truth. What you see is what you get. And so when studying, a lot of people don't rationale this out that way. They just say, well, it's a math formula, so I'm going to use it. Or the book says to do it this way. So I'm going to use, right? Wrong. A book, though I wish it could, it would be pretty cool if it did, all right? But this is not Disney Channel. A book, when you open it up, it's not about to start talking to you. It's not about to start telling you, like, where to go in the book, how to learn what you're learning and what you're reading. It's not going to, a book is not designed to really teach you, all right? You need a teacher to teach you. The book can serve as a guide to what you need to know, but a teacher would have to, all right? The third thing is this, pharmacy math problems are, pharmacy math formula are not conceptual. So, so they do not teach you, but they teach you or prepare you for any pharmacy math question that's thrown at you on the exam, if that makes sense, all right? Whenever you learn math from a more comprehensive and conceptual way, that's going to teach you exactly how to approach problems so that you're prepared for any problem on the exam. OK, so that when you show up to that computer, you're not doing like I did freeze. And then it's like, oh, what's that formula? What's that formula? What's that formula? Oh, I can't remember the formula. You're not. Let's solve this problem. Boom, 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 boom cross multiplication you're doing it all right is what you want to so if you're clear of that if you want to move towards pharmacy math formula of course it is your choice but the thumbs up let's see who we have here so we have valerie and guys um if you would go back to the beginning of this video if you're just now showing up go back to the beginning of the video got some golden nuggets in there around pharmacy math formulas all right and really how to go about learning math what to do and what not okay so uh let's talk valerie valerie says the things i have trouble with that hopefully you can explain identifying what formulas to use conversions and what formulas to use here Here's one, here is, here is one that I would say would be decent to use, okay? Because I don't want to be completely biased. The temperature Fahrenheit Celsius formula, use that one. I have a video actually on this channel around temperature and how to do temperature. So we condensed it so that you can use, we manipulated the formula so that you only have to use one instead of two. So you can check that one out. It's a free video here on the channel. But to be honest with you, my stance, my team's stance on formulas is we're not really big on pharmacy math formulas. And that's just the truth. OK, so with conversions, we give specific methods in our program on how to like for me to go through and explain it would take 30 plus minutes even to an hour. Right. But we have lessons on specifically how to do the uh, conversions between systems of measurement and then within the same systems of measurement, right? Because you do have to know the difference so that you know exactly what you're looking at. 
Some people don't know when they're approaching certain problems, you're looking, you're actually looking at two different systems of measurement in math um, versus like looking at uh, the one system of measurement, right? So which will be a much more simpler way of solving the conversion, but um, basically to another system. Those are definitely key things that you want to identify first when it comes to conversions. All right. Let's see here. We have Solomon. Solomon. Oh, Solomon says you're brilliant. <laughs> okay, Solomon. Thanks so much. Okay. So smart and humble. Yes, I definitely seek to be humble, right? Because um, we're always learning for sure. But no, thank you so much for the support. I really do appreciate it. Humbly, I appreciate it. All right. Uh, let's see. Valerie says again, okay, I'm good at conversions. It's just the video. So I'm just going to share this with you here, okay? Because you're here. And that is going to be, because you said here, can, can I tips on how to identify why they're asking, what they're asking for specifically, right? So here's the biggest tip. If you really want to get good at working word problems, pharmacy word problems, the first thing you need to do is ask the question, a question, all right? And that sounds kind of weird, but you're going to say, what I mean is look, look at that question and I really wish I could share my screen. So the next time I come, I'm going to come prepared to share my screen with you guys so I can show you some real juicy stuff. OK, but you want to ask the question a question. And what that means is ask that question. What are you asking me for? All right. So if you're reading a problem, what most students do is get to the question and they just start working the problem. That's wrong. You need to first know what are you getting asked about? Right. Because to get from if you need to go to California from Florida, right, the first thing you need to do is know where you're going. If you don't know you're going to California, then how you're going to get there doesn't even matter. Because, first of all, you don't even know where you're going. So it's the same with a pharmacy math problem. A word problem, you have to read and see where am I going first? And then let's start identifying how the how we're going to get there. All right. So that's the big that's the big stickler when it comes to pharmacy, math, word problems, identifying where you're going. I'm telling you, I've seen so many students work pharmacy, math problems. And I would say. About 80 to 90 percent of them don't do that. They don't do that stuff. They look at the problem. They assume what they need to do and they just start doing stuff. And that's not the proper way. All right. So hopefully that helped you and, and gave you some insight there. Uh, Valerie, on what you need to do. All right. And this has been super awesome. I love the questions too. So listen, for those of you that come back later and watch this video, leave a comment if you have more questions. I want to bring you guys more information here to help you through your journey of study. All right. Also, we have a free masterclass that you can go get free right now. We're actually going to start charging for it here in the upcoming months, but you're able to go get it totally free currently right now. Check below in the description. Leave a comment. If you're new to Pharmacy Tech Lessons, be sure to subscribe. We love our subscribers here and share this with someone who may need some help. All right. I'll be back with you guys next week. This has been Onisha Biggs of PharmacyTechLessons.com, and you have a wonderful day. Stay away from those formulas, all right? <laughs> Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.